Hello there, my beautiful and of the gamers. My name is John Day. We're talking about London Spitfire. Why they've been performing well so badly compared to what a lot of people were expecting, why they've been struggling in the Overwatch League. So, for those of you who don't know the exact standing as of recording this video, they did lose 3 to 1 their very first match against Philadelphia Fusion. They then lost 3 to 1 against Paris Infernal. They won. 2-3, well, 3-2, I suppose, against uh, Washington DC. They won 3-1 against uh, Hanjo Sparks, and they won 2-1 against Los Angeles Gladiators with a draw, actually, um, if I remember correctly, on that map. Now, why have they been struggling? Why did they lose the two first matches? They lost to Philadelphia, which, and quite significantly, 3-1, which was a team that they beat in the final. They then lost to a new Overwatch League team, Paris Eternal, why is that? Why has London almost fallen for grace? And, well, why do they be struggling? Well, the team has a problem with ghosts. And that is something that you will hear, probably heard a lot. London is a team that has been struggling because, because they have such an incredible individual talent on their team. And if those individual talents play DPSs, um, where, where they can be far more individual, and especially if they can face up against a team that also is going to take those duels, play DPS versus DPS, they are incredibly then scary to play against. Their London will then have Bird Ring, they will then have Profit, they can really pop up. However, Goats is where they seem to be struggling. There's a lot of reason for that. And if you do notice also, when they are uh, looking almost like a little bit more of a dominant force, if you look at maps when it comes to the King's Row map, when they at least get to play with a Sombra that can do some individual stuff and harass far more, they look at least a little bit better. See London struggling with a sense of purpose during their matches. They have very bad engages when they play GOAT, and they have some bad old uses, which really messes up their old economy in the long run. They miss communication. There is um, sometimes they even look scared when they play, which is not the London that we saw last stage. With this season, they look sometimes scared, letting the enemy team bully them around. Um, and this goes both down to the team and on the individual plays. Sometimes we do see Bird Ring, that he sometimes will be really greedy for his energy. Bubbling, you know, they, right before an engage, right before a fight starts, he will bubble because he wants energy. Doing that when that fight starts, he won't have a bubble to either save a crucial team member like Nurse when he get caught out trying to push someone, or get gesture, which then get, get bullied and pushed around. And it's just really weird. We see some stuff where they don't play as they are supposed to play. Now, it has to be noted that London isn't trash. Some people are calling London trash. London is not trash. They play very well and have some really good moments. But in comparison to some of the stronger GOATS team, they are lacking on some points. At least from what we saw the first two matches. And it must be noted that they are playing much better in their latest matches. And that is a very big credit to their staff, to the players for being able to manage themselves um, and find a way out of this slump, which we did see they were struggling with last season, especially in the last stage of last season, where London all of a sudden was really, really dominant, and then all of a sudden they started losing, and there was some talk about, I believe it was Profit or Birdwing that was um, struggling really with, with performing during his, their matches, and then they picked it up in the end. That was one of the reasons that Philadelphia Fusion was really set to be the winners of the Overwatch League by a lot of people, because of London's previous performance. They managed to, to kind of get out of that hole, that slump, as well in the end there, but they were struggling for a much longer period of time than what they are now. And it's very good that they have managed, again, credit to the players and their coaching staff for managed to get out of this slump. Now, let's take a look at a specific fight here in Hollywood, um, which is... Um, this is against Philadelphia Fusion. This is one of the first things. And let's really just kind of break down some of the mistakes. Because this is like one of those where they do... It's, it's, a, it's a very visual that they kind of mess up some stuff so let's really just play off here now we want some context here right so essentially fusion has a grab a shatter and a drop beat while london have both their support ultimates they have a shatter and they have a bomb okay so london is very scared of car based graviton definitely trying to engage super fast ult especially with shatter and starve the fusion right meaning that they want to ult, play super aggressive, that way there's no chance that Carpe can use his grab this fight. That way, London gets a shatter, Bird Ring is building his own grab, Philadelphia gets no ult shot worth really anything as their grab is up, 
their Reinhardt Shatter is up, their Drop Beat is up, right? They might get Pokebomb or get much closer to Pokebomb, especially if they get stuff like Boombox with the Shatter, right? Boombox will, will not be allowed to build into Transcendence. Then we kind of have a grab for the next fight and so on. So that is what their purpose are, to ult really early before Carpe is allowed to set up a grab, get an Earth Shatter in, stun them, and that way, they, London can win this fight and then dominate, hopefully, also next fight. Which is a very small, if you see on the clock, there's only 1 minute and 50 seconds left. So that's actually a really small move of London. However, it's going to get messed up quite badly. So let's really just start here. Let me see. Right? So London engages this super early right here. You can see the bomb just right here. And that is kind of where they engage here while... While the um, Philadelphia still have all their abilities back up, there's nothing that is able to stop this. And it, there's no threat. The Earth Shadow comes out and gets no value, right? And there's nothing that reason for for Philadelphia to drop their shields. They have bubbles, they have every single ability. The bomb comes out super, super early and therefore gets absolutely no value. They're not even let through the choke, so the engage is really clunky. And it seems like miscommunication. The Fury might have bombed a little bit earlier or there's been some form of miscommunication here as it's a bad engage, right? Then it seems like Nuss here, he's gonna try to push push um, a Sato and kind of get him out of position. Right, and he's gonna mess up, just do that, he's gonna be get a bubble. And then the counter grabs come out from the fusion, managing to kill Nas, right? And then, this is where stuff all strikes against, and London disengages this fight, right? Okay, they try to go away, right here, right? There is a bubble that goes on to Jester here, which is a little bit of a weird bubble. It might be because he's he's scared of EQ stunning him, but he, do, he should have, Jester should have enough shield to be able to get into this doorway without needing that bubble. And that's a very crucial ability that they are going to need. If you also, um, yeah, if you notice also where Bedosin is going, the Bedosin is splitting now from the team up here, allowing Poco to essentially just fly to high ground and stop him, but also allowing Philadelphia to deny this side of the point and just kill off, Bedo uh, kill off yeah, Bedosin. Which, again, is them splitting and just some form of mid-communication here, right? Now, they do try and set Profit up there, and they also, Fury also do that. But now the split, the team is split in two, with Birdwinger just on one side, and then the rest of the team on the left side. They try to, they essentially just get chased after, and Jester is gonna do a heroic charge after here, getting stunned. No follow-up, no bubble, nothing, right? Remember that Birdwing used his bubble earlier. No bubble, nothing. That's gonna be a pick on their Reinhardt, which is not what they wanted. The sound barrier comes out, but with no effect because they are split, right? They managed to get Carpe out, right? And Bird Ring, by this time, again, incredible individual good player. He's built from 30 all the way up to 91. He's gonna get a Shatter, no, his Graviton, very, very soon here, right? Sado allowing to swim because there's no Ryan to contest him, and then he grabs. There's no Reinhardt here, no bomb available, and he decides to grab both of these, which is horrendously bad, because that does that. Carpe is already 40%, meaning he's gonna be 40% ahead of Bird Ring during the next, uh, until the next, the next time the Graviton. No follow-up, no way of being follow-up, and it's just a huge loss. They do get out the trance from Boombox, but it doesn't really matter. And that is, again, really just all the messy stuff. It's a bad engage, a disengage with the split, wasted abilities, chasing after some kills, and dying them, wasting ultimate. And it's just really, really poor to see a first division team, and seeing one of the better, or one of the best first division team, mess up some of this stuff and as I said they have improved uh, much better now if you look upon them uh, on a later match in the same matchup it's the same ma it's kind of the same day it's against Philadelphia Fusion still it's map 3 here where they are allowed to play the DPSs on Volskaya first point look how much they play better they take spade they apply pressure they can do these individual plays where we can so much better and the team looks far more confident and it seems like they have a well structured plan it doesn't seem like there are some form of miscommunication or people are a little bit confused about how they're supposed to do it or what they're supposed to do. It looked, they look so much more natural and so much more confident in this way of playing. Way more structured when they're allowed to play their uh, DPS team compositions. And again, what is, has to be noted is that, you know, I'm overall excited 
for London Spitfire. I think their matches are really fun, even in Goat's meta, and there's so much potential with London. They have so much potential. They improved so much during the latest matches. Again, this is their very first match uh, map uh, map up boy on the stage, which is fine, but again, doing very similar stuff against Paris Infernal, and now starting to catch some of their momentum um, against stuff like, you know, uh, the Gladiators and Watson Destiny managed to get up some of those wins. But they are not bad, but there's just some of these smaller things. And from one of the best teams, again, they are just not up to par with some of the better GOATS team right now. And that's why they're struggling in some of these team composition. And I hope um, that you like this video. If you do, like and subscribe to your channel. Uh, and tell me down below if there's any other team or anything that you want my opinion on here. I would gladly help and try to make videos on that. Now, as always, guys, please take care of this. It's the positive. I love you guys very, very much. My name has been Joel. And as always, guys, keep the enemy in your closet.